I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, Jen. Hope you can hear me. Yes, I can't hear you. Hope you can hear me, Jen, now. Yes, I can hear you, Livingstone. Can you? Yes, yes, we can. You can proceed from there. Thank you. All right. Yes, Okay. Um, yes, we can. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Livingstone, can we go on? All right. Okay, uh, good, good afternoon everyone and Kisi University. I'm so delighted to be here and to share my thoughts um, on the topic about adapting to the uh, degrees for skill-based economy. So I have about 30 minutes to share my story, but more importantly, to just share with you aspects of the future of work and what would be relevant for you to do to build your brand and be ready for the job market. I have been in HR for a long time, for more than 12 years now. So I have quite a lot of insights that I would like to share with you. I didn't start my journey as HR, and you know, and I know we'll be talking about the power of being agility when uh, being agile. When I did my degree, I did my degree in education. So I studied a B. Ed. I I did. Uh, accounting and I did economics and like we all know that should have gotten me to be a teacher but like life would have it or the economy would have it there are no positions for teachers and looking back that became a blessing in these guys because then I had to hustle for a job and to cut a long story short it took me a journey of discovering who Jane is to be where I am as a HR practitioner Beyond my degree, um, I took a journey of finding out what else could Jane do, and I did several courses, and I believe that's what got me to do the human resource management and be where I am. But it's been a long journey of self-discovery and of personal development. And as I'm going to be talking about personal branding uh, in, the new, in the future of work, I'll be highlighting some of the lessons that I've learned that probably you could borrow uh, to define how you create your personal brand as well. So I was given this topic and I've really thought about it and what I'm able to do within 30 minutes. 
but I would like us to have this hashtag, dare to change your narrative, because when you talk about personal branding, I would believe I'm not talking to the whole, everybody else, I'm just talking to individuals who are willing to discover what they can do and be able to change. I'll start by saying that Sorry. So when you talk about the future and we talk about the degrees of the future, when we talk about the skill sets of the future, I'd like us to have this in mind and not forget about it as we have this conversation this afternoon. Whatever we define the future or whatever information we are going to define the future, there's one management guru who said, we create the future we want we create it. And how do we create it? I'm going to take you on a journey in terms of what is the market looking for? What are the, the skills of the future? And what could you start doing from a personal branding to be ready for that? And as we go doing that, I'd like us to have this in mind. What is changing in the future of work? I'll give you some high I mean, highlights on what is changing in the future of work. We are all looking to graduate and come to, to work where we are, but what is changing? And as Joseph asked me to talk about personal branding, why is it important that then you, you know who you are and you position yourself to be ready for this future of work? Maybe one thing I didn't tell you is that I'm a coach. I, I am a coach, I'm a career coach as well, and a leadership coach. So I asked too many questions, and let's agree that that's what we'll engage in, because I believe questions help us to think through stuff and be able to mine the ideas that we're really looking for. So what is changing in the future of work? And why is personal branding a very important pillar to that? I'll proceed and feel free to chat or to ask any questions as I go on. It's unfortunate I'm not able to see you. I hope we had this physically. But before I continue with this personal branding journey and what is important, I'd like to ask you, who, who are you becoming? You are in college now, you're in uni, maybe in your third year, probably your second year, probably just joined, probably you're now on your fourth year. Who are you becoming? And I'd like you to take um, a second to think about your journey. Because when you talk about the future of work, the future is not what we think. The future is very evolving. And I'd like to use an analogy of yourself. If you have a paper, quickly reflect back. Where were you four years back? Ulikuwa wapi four years back. If you're to look back, do a quick mental picture of where you are. And I know you're already seeing yourself. What were your skill sets then? Who did people think you are? But most importantly, who, who did you think you are? What were you doing? Yeah. What were your skill sets? Four years back, it's not such a long time, but it could be depending. So I hope you're engaging. I hope you're looking back. I hope you're writing four years back. Who was I? Where were I? What was I doing then? Um, I want to trust we are all together on the same page. So you're really thinking about that. But I don't want to get stuck at four years back. I want you to think about now. And maybe Joseph is the only guy probably I know right now here. Where are you now? What environment are you now? Four years now. Four years forward is now. Where are you now? What is your skill set? What, what is your leadership level? What do you know? How do you define your environment? Who have you become? What are your skill sets? What is your attitude? From the four, from the four years you were last four years, whom have you become? Yeah? So I don't want to get us stuck here at now, but that's where we are. So it's good to appreciate who have we become and who we are. Who are you as a leader? 
if you're an actuarial student, so what do you know? What about your industry do you know? What, do you be, what are you thinking you wanna become? Fast forward, I hope you have a line or a box or whatever, however you would like to do stuff. Three years from now, whom do you want to become? Like I said, as we started, Peter Drucker said, you create the future you want to see. There's very little you can do about where you are four years ago, but it's so much you can project from where you are and where do you wanna be three years from now? It could be three years from now, three or five years from now. As you create your personal branding and as we unpack that, it's good to define where am I? What are the skill sets? What am I hearing? What am I reading? What are the guys today going to tell me about me and what do I want to be? And that from that, you must define what do you want to be three years from now? And it needs to be succinct. It needs to be very clear that you define, I wanna be this, this is what I'm looking for. These are my aspirations. They need to be as black and white. So we don't have time to think through what you've come up with, but I'd like you to take away this exercise. It's one of the most powerful exercises you can do for yourself. Look back, where are you coming from? Where were you? Who defined you? How did you define yourself? Look at yourself now. Whom have you become? Who are you? What can we say about you? If we came to your class and asked about you, whom would we say you are? What would your lecturers define you? What kind of stuff do you do? What kind of research do you do, for example? What do you know about your industry? Who are you now? But most importantly, the power we have every day is the power to define where we want to go. And I believe such sessions we, have, we are having today bring us information to enable us, to empower us to think, what can I start doing to be where I want to be three years? If I want to work in an insurance company as an actuarial, an actuary, if I went back to an, on a journey as an actuarial student or to be an actuary, what am I doing? You know, do I even understand what, do, what I need to be there? If I want to be head of product development in an organization, and I believe my actual journey is, is, a long, is along that slide. What am I doing? So who are you becoming? It's part of defining the personal brand you want to build. And sometimes how far we move forward and how far we create our brand ahead is based on where we're coming from. Because where, where we're coming from becomes lessons to the people we want to become in future. So take, take this away and do it and think hard about it because it's gonna form a framework of the personal brand you want to create in the market. What are we seeing on the screen? What is it that you're seeing on the screen? Can anybody tell me what they are seeing? Livingston, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? Are you sure? Joseph, what are you seeing? Uh -huh. eh? All right. Okay, let's move ahead. I am not, it's not, I can't hear very, um, very well. What we have here is, I mean, I'm seeing a block of stuff, but like Livingstone said it, let's assume it's an iceberg. And I know the people in this hall are very young, so they may not identify with the iceberg. But for those of us who are older, there's used, there used to be a movie called The Titanic and the iceberg then comes in Hardy. Probably can go to the classics and find out about a movie called The, the Titanic. So let's assume this is an iceberg, but we are entitled to what we want to see. But I'd like to use the analogy of an iceberg to talk about personal branding and what is a personal brand. So when you see an iceberg, you just see the tip. An iceberg is usually a tip. But what is below or what is an iceberg? An iceberg, you'll find it in an ocean. So you just see a tip of it, right? But if you look deeper, this is what an iceberg is. You see the tip of it, but below that, it's a massive thing. You know, the only reason why the Titanic 
sunk is because the captain just saw an iceberg. This is what they saw. But below that, it's a mass. It's massive, like you can see, it's self-explanatory. And so why am I using this as part of talking about personal branding? Because personal branding is the person that you're gonna connect with every time. Is how competent you are. So if I meet with you, I'll within a few minutes of interacting with you, I'll clearly know who you are. I'll see what's your mastery of the things you're bringing on your on the table. I'll see your passion. I'll see your your very personal personal. You know, I'll see so much by what you present yourself. And guys, I can tell you sometimes when you come to interview rooms and you're being interviewed. The very first thing somebody sees, even before they see anything else, is what you present. Before you even open your mouth, is how you present yourself. But the person you present yourself and the person you get to show the world is a lot more. Is a lot more that we don't see. But we're going to judge you. We're going to judge you by what we see. So my takeout for you today is that you must do a lot of work so that by the time the world is meeting you, there's so much you have done. And what we'll be seeing is a product of a lot of work, lots of work that you've done on yourself to show up as a person you show up, to show up as an entrepreneur, to show up as a competent actuarial person, to show up as a competent insurance person. For you to show up as a leader, there's so much you must do because we'll only get to see you once you show up. So as I'm using this concept of the iceberg, and I'm talking about the person you bring to us at the workplace, in a business, in whatever aspect of your work, it's so much what you do. You bring your attitude. We may never see your attitude, but that is how we'll feel it when you show up. I'm a customer, I come to your organization, I'm a staff, we are supposed to do a product and we're in a team. How you show up is, a, what your attitude is all about. It's about your strength, it's about your talent. You know, It's about the leadership skills that you endeavor to develop. It's about understanding your personality. I know we know about personalities and we all have different personalities and all different personalities are different, but they all bring their unique self to ourselves. And the minute we discover what strength we bring to the table is very important. It's about what we learn. It's about our mastery. It's about the things that we need to stop doing so that we become the person we show up. So the journey of personal branding is a very intentional journey. And like I said, you must define where you wanna go. You must define your career aspiration. You must define the leader you want to be in the marketplace. How do you do that? You learn. You either learn, you participate. For example, this is an association of students. Do you even play a role in it? I mean, how do you get to grow yourself to a level that when you show up in the marketplace, when you show up as an entrepreneur, when you show up as, as an actuarial student, when you show up in whatever employment you're looking for, then we can feel you, we can hear you and identify, this is a talent we want in the market. So it is an intentional journey that you take and ultimately people buy you. People buy you as a product because you've done a lot of work to grow yourself. So when you think about personal branding, don't forget that, that you have to be intentional every day to learn, to be conscious, to know where you are, to know things you must work on and to look for help to be able to develop yourself. So back to my question and looking at the iceberg, who are you becoming in your journey from four years now where you are and the person you, you want to be. So whom are you becoming? Are you aware that you're even becoming or is it just you, you just show up? Or are you intentional in building the kind of talent you want to be or the kind of person that you want to be known for in this market? Yeah. So I'd like to show you or just this discuss with you some of the skills that you must be growing and what we're looking for or what employers are looking for. And I'm very open-minded because I like this word and I'm sure you've heard it. It's called we're in a VUCA world. The market and the environment we are in, the global economy that we're talking about is no longer predictable. 
It's become very volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, and it's ambiguous. That's what we have to deal with every day. So I'm going to share with you insights of skills that will, will, will move on or will become relevant in future. But also to just let you know you've got to be so versatile and open-minded as a person. You can no longer say, I am doing this, and this is all I am, I am about. For example, let me show you how a VUCA environment is. Last year, now that I told you I work in a HR department, we decided I was really looking to ensure that staff have a, a, a pleasant working environment where we have work harmony. You can get into work some hours. I mean, you can come in early and leave early, sort of a thing, so that we have flexi time. And especially for guys working in Nairobi, then you don't get caught up in traffic. And it was such a huge conversation taking that paper to the board just to allow people to come early and leave earlier. And I had to justify how will you track productivity? How will you track that people are not, I mean, are spending all the eight hours? Just a few um, times to that approval, COVID happened. Sorry, that was in 2019, COVID happened. So when COVID happened, that means or meant we all had to work from home. What was important now was that every staff had to be well and we could no longer go to the office. So let me tell you what I'm saying when I say it's a VUCA world and you've got to be open-minded. So the story of we need to have a policy that you can work a few hours became a archaic because now people are working from home. It's not about how, much, how many hours they work. You don't even have control over that. It's not about when they come into the office, you don't have control over that. So as a HR, you think very fast on the spot. How do you still ensure productivity from your staff now that they're working from their homes? And how do you do that? Nobody prepares you for that. And I can tell you guys, that's the world of work. A lot is gonna change. Even as we're talking about personal branding today, the one thing I'd like you to take out is that you got to be so versatile, you got to be so informed that you're quickly adjusting according to the needs of the economy. For example, today a degree could be very important, tomorrow it may not be re relevant as such. So I would want you to build skills as an individual that makes you versatile, that makes you learn so quickly and become adaptable to the changes. For example, I'd like to say, even up to date, good talent is scarce, and you can ask Livingstone. Sometimes you're looking for good people and you can't get. Sometimes the technical competencies that we study is not everything that we need. People are also looking for people that have the softer skills, the leadership skills. For example, I've done interviews where you get very competent and I would just probably use actuarial students because um, it's one of the skills I love because actuarial students are versatile and I like, people like people who can, you know, use data. You know, data is a, is a common thing we are looking for. We're looking to have insights and all that. So actuarial students become very versatile in the market, but that's not everything that an employer is looking for. That's not everything that's gonna differentiate you if you become an entrepreneur, self-employed. There's a lot more. And some of the skills that you need to be developing or thinking about even as you're in school is your business acumen. You know, do you know the train? Do you know what business people are in? As I said, three years from now, you want to work maybe in an insurance company, maybe in an investment company. What do you know about that train? Yeah. So every time you're working in an organization or for yourself, you deal with people. Ultimately, you're providing a solution to a customer. So how are you preparing yourself to have customer-centric skills? How are you a negotiator and influencing skills? It's so important when you look for a talent that is competent technically, but it has other soft skills because in a business environment, you want people that can drive results and driving results is not one journey. It's not about what technical competence. You want people who can work with data but it's good to work with data, but how do you help yourself if you're an entrepreneur, you're an organization to convert that data to give insights, business insights that offers a solution to a customer. All right, the other thing I'll be looking for or an employer will be looking for or will make you a success in the market is how innovative are you? You know, how do you problem solve? Are you a kind of a person that sees 
what are the needs of this organization? What is the customer problem? And define solution. How do you prepare yourself for that? You've got to be open. You've got to be a person who reads. You've got to be a person who engages with the information, with people to understand what are the solutions, what are the business needs in the market? So then you're coming in to provide a solution. You're coming in with your value to provide a solution. And in all that, I don't even want to talk about digital literacy because then a lot of things are now going to happen digitally. But as you all do this, you're defining a customer. You must know how to get results through other people and how to drive the desired results through other people. For that, you must be very emotionally intelligent. You must build your personal skills yeah, in, in whatever you do. And how do you know that? You could ask me, I'm a student. These skills I think you start working for right now. You have organizations in school. You have a lot of things that you're doing. You're going for internships. Make sure that you're developing these skills because these are the skills that define you in the market, that define you in, in whatever field you become. I always say people have fast degrees, but you find a lot of people move on to do many things. And whatever, what makes people move to discover, because we're always on a journey of self-discovery, is these other skills that you adopt in your journey. So always, guys, in your journey of personal branding, you got to be entrepreneurial. You got to be able to spot opportunities. You can't work in an organization or you can't work as an individual and you're not open-minded to, to quickly spot opportunities because they don't last. And be sure how you're going to create value. Yeah? Value for the customer, ultimately. Whoever the customer you're defined to be. But let's all be mad. Let's all be deliberate to make our difference whatever you are, be unique and create innovations that give that mark. Um, so I've just tried to unpack how that is and I'm, I'm trying to wind up. It's, so how do I create that? So with all this information, how do I start a journey of redefining my personal growth plan or my personal growth map? I'll give you suggestions of things you could start doing immediately so that you, you take charge, you know, you dare to change your narrative. You dare to be in charge of what you want to see as growth from now to the next three years into your, into your future. You must take um, some time, which I call the discovery stage, and just think, you know, sometimes I say, call yourself for a meeting, yeah? Call yourself for a meeting and decide, what really do I want? Who am I? You know, what do, what do I really want? I'm in school right now, but what do I want? What is my career aspiration? What problem do I want to solve for this society? Define that. It is aspirational. I mean, nothing is as black and white. Sometimes things are aspirational. You've got to think, you've got to create, yeah? Then determine, for me to get to this aspiration, yeah, now I'm doing my degree. What else do I need? You must know. If you want to be head of product or head of actuary, what else do I need to do? What other skills do I need? What experience, what competencies must I have? And do I have them? And that's why you must always say, where am I? You know, for example, if you want to be in business development, you know what competencies you need for that. Where are you? Is it a journey you wanna take? Is it a course you wanna do? Is it a mentor you wanna look for to help you on the journey? Then also look at who are you? What are your personal strengths? What is your unique value proposition? I mean, who makes, what makes you who? And how is that going to be fundamental to your career aspiration? Then just see, um, as much as we think big, where am I? What can I do right now? You know, don't start looking for excuses. You know, Sina Pesa, Sina, I don't know what. Where can I start? How can I start building my network right now? Then in this stage, also ask yourself, what stops you? What derails you? What makes you not move? You have aspiration. What makes you not dream? What are the things? Is it the people you hang around? You got to figure out that. Is it that you don't dream hard enough? Is it that you don't have issues? What derails you? Because 
you got to get to know what stops you because you need to catch it and deal with it. As you're doing this, and I wish I could ask, what are you seeing on, on my screen, you know? Um, I'm not sure I'll get an answer because I can't see any of you, but I'd like to ask, when you see a glass like this, you either see it as half full or you see it as half empty. So as you're doing your discovery and seeing where am I, what do I want? What do I not want to be known for? What must I doing today? It's all a mindset. It's a mindset you adopt. And the mindset will be like this glass you see. You can either decide to see life as half empty or half full. Half empty is where you see all the reasons why you can't get where you want. You want to say, I couldn't have jobs. My friends have been sending CVs forever. They don't get jobs. But in that same, there are people getting jobs. So it depends on how, what kind of mindset you want to adopt. But this is what I would say. In every situation in your career or where you are, the mindset you adopt is what drives you. You can see a glass as half empty or half full. But if you see it as half full, half full means four years, this is where you are. Now this is where you are. There's this empty bit. That means you can feel it. You can feel this empty space with the things you want to feel because you're very clear on the information you need and where you need to be. Um, so once you're very clear about that, you got to plan. You got to plan. You got to have a plan. So have the end in mind. You know, like I said, you can't wake up every day, bilampango. You know, unintentionally, not knowing where you wanna go. So you got to be very sure what the end looks like because you know where you wanna go. You know the kind of person you want to be known for in this market, and you got to work on it. As you do that have a mindset that we are in a world of possibilities. If you look around, there are a lot of possibilities. You can never plan if you have a limited mindset. And what creates mindset is that you have information, you have mentors, you have coaches. That is very important because that's when you start unpacking world of opportunities. If you close yourself, you'll always see what's not working. If you open yourself, you start seeing there are a lot of opportunities around you. So as I'm winding up, you must always have your plan and I'll not a plan of the journey you want to take. Like I said, know where you are, know where you want to go, know what the skills are needed. Prioritize that. Prioritize your growth. If you don't do it, nobody else does. Yeah. Get feedback from people, from your lecturers, from people who hang around you or who you are. Look for a mentor. If you think there's an information you need, look for mentors, look for people who've gone ahead of you. Reach out to people to help you. Know your industry, you know. If I want to work in such industry, you don't wait until you get to an interview. Start looking for information and understand it. Know who are your networks around you. Know people, start knowing people around you. Grow your profile, yeah and get involved, yeah? One of the ways in which you develop the softer skills is get involved, get into professional associations like you are today. Look for things to do around you. You'll be surprised at what level of growth you get and then execute the plan. Just have the small wins of things you could start doing today, next week, next year. And you'll be surprised at how you're growing your personal brand. Growth doesn't happen alone, guys. You need help, you know, I guess, Livingstone and the Corporate Academy, this is what they're trying to bring to you. You need help. You don't have to make mistakes other people have made. You can get a mentor. Get people who are ahead of you. Get a coach. A coach can even be your peer coach who points things that you need to work on. Get even younger people. They are probably more knowledgeable. I find a lot of depth when I talk to younger people and learn so much. Have people who work with you, but ultimately read, research, get information, be on the top of your industry because you're informed and have people who can hold you accountable to your journey. As I'm going to wind up, I'd like to say that if you really want to do something, you'll find a way, you know. If you're very clear that three years from now, this is what I want to be known for, this is how I want to have grown. If you really want something, you'll find a way. By the way, and if you don't, you'll find an excuse. So sometimes our excuses are when we have blinded, they're looking for another alternative. 
So create your personal brand. Like I said, it starts from inside. It then becomes what we are seeing as a tip of the iceberg. And then we start the promotion. People start knowing who you are, what value you're adding to the market. So my ask of us this afternoon uh, as I wind up is, <clears throat> we cannot, we create the future by not being victims of the past. There's nothing we can change about the past, but we can architect the future we want to see. We can be an architect of the personal brand you want to create in this market. And you must start by writing stuff down. What do you want? You must, nobody will define that for you. You must define what is it that you really want. You must define what's not serving you right now. The things you must let go for you to pursue what you want to see. And you must commit to stuff. You must commit to things, to a discipline. You must commit to uh, reading, researching. You must commit into getting involved so that you start creating the person you want to become now. And when you do that, you'll be surprised at how loud you become and how the market becomes agile to you. So if you want it hard enough, draw it, draw that vision, draw the skills you want, uh, vision it, uh, dream it, code it, whatever. But you must have a plan of achievement and look for help, guys. Look for help. Look for people who walk your journey that you have defined. And with time, you be who you're looking for. Like I said, as I started, we're in a very VUCA environment. Today, this is relevant. Tomorrow, it's no longer relevant. So we need very agile minds, very agile people to conquer this world. And like Charles Darwin said, it's not the strongest of species that survive, not even the most intelligent, but the one that is most adaptive to change. And so my ask of today uh, for all of us is that keep thinking, keep looking, keep on learning, learn today and learn tomorrow, relearn again, and keep being agile with the times. And how you do that is just, just be prepared and just know that this is it. So I believe when you do a little bit of what I'm discussing with, then you'll be authentic, you'll be memorable. You know, people will know you, you'll create impact. You'll create relevant solutions for your market. And always remember, as a personal brand, who you are is what you sell to us, is the iceberg, is what we buy, is what we see. Also remember, keep evolving. The person you are today should be different from tomorrow because you are loading yourself with information, making new decisions and all that. But ultimately add value, add value wherever you are. And we're going to tell your story. Your story is going to be told and you're gonna differentiate your brand. Thank you very much. So, sorry, I, I didn't get the question very well. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Kevin. Uh, you're talking about being the very, uh, being able to tell the government. At the same time, you're saying that uh, 
we need to be to acquire these skills by research and also uh, maybe uh, having what to go to already on the, on the market. And my concern is that uh, those who are already in the market, they give us a back shoulder when we are closer to them. So my concern to you was to at least when we provide uh, another forum for those uh, you make it less than understand our situation when we get into into already the corporate the world, they can take us to the land from uh, what we are saying. That was my concern. Thank Livingstone, please get yeah. us. I got bits and bits of the second question. If somebody can chat it. He's saying uh, those in yeah. the corporate let's give them a call to yeah. Yeah. So how do you link them to the corporate world? I believe that's what you said. Yeah? You asked it, yes. Yes, okay, yes. all right. Okay, I could start with the first question, and that is how to identify a mentor. All right. Um, and I'll say, yeah. I'd like first to debunk that a lot of people, and, and that's why we need to have a, a clear mindset on what we want. A lot of people are looking to mentor people. And I would say, for example, I only talked to Livingstone two weeks ago, we were having a different chat, and he told me about that. And a lot of people have passion to give what to give back. Yeah. Sometimes if, for example, I've grown and I have all this information with me, it doesn't help me at all. It's only helpful when I share it with other people. And a lot of people have identified that. But I'd like to say we're in a society and we're in a very imperfect society, just like in many things, just like in um, money. You can't give money to everybody. Not everybody is as as, 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 as well-meaning as, as they appear. So when you, you want to identify a mentor, you must, also, you must identify somebody who has your values, somebody who is where you are, and of course, somebody is willing. And like I said, we've got to be resilient enough to be told, no, I'm not available. No, I'm not available. Or to even get a, um, a, um, a snub on your request. But that should not stop you because down the lane, you'll get somebody who is willing to work with you. So what am I saying? If you encounter the first person and they are not willing to help you or they not snub you, that does not kill your dream. And that's why I said, when you define what you want, nothing stops you. you, you, you you're resilient enough, you search hard enough until you get the person you're looking for. And you can meet networks. You can use the people you have already met. Now you have met Livingstone, you have met Jane. Use other people to get you to where you're looking for. So first clear your mindset that it's okay to be told no and it's okay for somebody not to be willing to mentor you. But when one person is saying no, there are a hundred other persons that are available to mentor you. So keep, keep searching and keep looking and keep looking for help from people you have met. Um, and that's why I say we're in an imperfect world, but your resource needs to be so clear that you want to make a difference. And like if I had time, I could share with you my journey. It's been a journey of resilience to be where I am. I have had so many no's. I have had so many turns to be where I am, but a story for another day. But I can tell you when I look back, I feel what you're feeling, that the market was cold, that there were no people, there were no mentors. But your resolve needs to be so, so clear enough that nobody can stop you. You keep knocking, you keep moving to the next person, to the next person. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. And, uh, we have another question. So, we have one more question. So, thank you. Okay, 
Livingston, please reframe the question. I didn't hear all of it. Oh my God, there's some bit I'm missing. What can you do to, to the job market? I'm missing some words there. He said, what can we do to get the skills <laughs> needed to the job market? All right. So, like I said, you know, I assume you're a fourth year or you're still in the university. Um, as you come to the job market, we are cognizant. And that's why you find that you don't have any experience. But I said, there are those experiences that you hone yourself because people first buy you by what they see. Um, for example, you find that like a lot of actuarial students will probably get into management training programs or internship programs. So at that point, you probably are learning everything anew. You've done the contextual learning in, in class. When you come to the job market, you're now learning the real work, how to translate what you've learned to, to the workplace. So the most important thing, and I can tell you at entry level positions, if you get that, is the person that you bring. And like I said, your attitude, your versatility to learn, how fast you can learn, how you show up at work. And I can, if we had time, I could give you scenarios of people who come, who go to the work environment as interns. They're just given intern, internship. And at the end of it, everybody wants to retain them. Everybody wants to know when is this person graduating so that we can have them on board. So, that means they didn't show up because they were very technically good. They're learning, but they showed up in all other skills of who they are, their proactiveness, their willingness to learn very fast, um, their attitude, their time management, all these other skills show up for people to want to work with you. And that is what you would bring to the future because right now you've not had any experience, but the person you show up in the first instance, you're given an internship or anything else, it's what starts you on a growth plan in your work environment. And people then are willing to hold you a little longer or work, work with you. And as well, as simple as, even how do you show up for the interview? You know, your code for an interview. How do you even show up for that? Your preparation, uh, the way you've done your profile, the way you show up, even when you've given a call. It's a journey and that's what I'm saying. You got to be intentional to know what is the market looking for. Then you start seeing, you, you do a, a self-assessment. Where, where am I and what do I need to start doing? The small steps and the small wins and that finds you readiness. So I would want you not to be worried that um, about the workplace, but I'd want you to take charge of the improvement you're making on yourself and how you're preparing yourself every day towards that end. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, okay. okay. Say that again, sorry. Yeah, what are the which I try to do the I try to do Can I reframe that? Did you ask what are the soft uh, the soft skills needed? Oh, okay. What are the soft skills that are required to be competitive in the job market? Um, uh, I wish we were in a physical session or have thrown this back to the class to, to discuss a little bit. But let me tell you, if I'm looking for somebody now and it's a, an entry level job and I'm looking for soft skills, I look at your own self-leadership skills. I am looking at the person you present yourself to be, 
to the market, like we have said, I'm looking for a confident person, you know, somebody who understands what they have done and what value you're bringing to the organization. I'm informed maybe 70% of you guys are actuarial students. If I'm looking for an actuarial assistant or executive at the workplace, I may have an interview for six people who have the degree and the, who look like this is what I'm looking for. So they firstly are technically competent of the six. So this is a journey I'll be looking to see number one, do, do they have mastery of what they have studied? Or if I give them an actuarial job, are they going to do it? Do they understand it? So the first place is to be competent in what you have studied that you can apply to the workplace because I'll test that or you'll be tested for that. So you need to understand very well what your trade is and what you're bringing to the market. Number two, and maybe a lot more of the questions after we understand that you can do the job, is how you will do the job. So I'll be looking at who you are. You know, some people fail an interview because of the way even they answer questions. You can already pick their attitude, this, the attitude they bring in. Because even if you're an actuarial student, I mean, person, you will work with people. So people are looking for people who have a good attitude and you'll see comment has a pleasant attitude as some of the comments. So you must be sure that you're able to sell yourself and people are looking at a skill that they can work with you. And that's why I talked about customer centricity. You must show that you're proactive, you know, and that could be just identified by questions you may be asked, you know, scenarios. They can, you must be seen to be all-rounded, you know. For example, the people, I'm sure the students who probably organize this forum, and you come and say, I was able to prepare this. Those are all skills that you bring to the marketplace. So the self-leadership and the person you are is what I'm referring to, in addition to your technical expertise that you bring into the work market. So please build on that as well, your communication skills and all that. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Really appreciate your time. And, uh, the session, I think, has been very, very interesting. Uh, this one, I think, is very important. Yeah, so really, uh, any next slide? Uh, this is the whole thing next time.